Hey, my name is Sam Crowley, uh, host of the Everyday Saturday podcast, 18 years and running. And I just wanted to spend some time with you today. Not a tremendous uh, long time. Uh, if you've ever been on one of my webinars, you know I am not a fan of death by PowerPoint. Uh, I try to do these things with no slides. Try to make it interactive. So if you have any questions, fire them right in the chat as we go along. I just want to chat with you today, uh, talk about the power of podcasting. You know, I did a podcast yesterday because I'm getting hit with all this AI stuff. You know, artificial intelligence is the new wave. And I have sworn that off, man. I am all about authenticity and sharing a message. Nothing will ever replace the human interaction that people really crave, you know, and podcasting. You can't um, substitute that. There's nothing artificial about you and there's nothing artificial about your message. And that's why podcasting has really taken off. Um, are you a consumer? Do you listen to podcasts? Type yes in the chat if you do. Uh, if you don't, you can tap, type no in there as well. Every day, Lynn says, well, that's great. You're, you're our target audience, Lynn. Um, I, I'll, share a, uh, I'll share my screen in just a second. Hey, the world famous Kevin Connect. Good to see you, buddy. So many people consume podcasts because they crave that authenticity. You know, they want to they want to listen to a real person, not any AI stuff. All right, I'll get off my AI bandwagon. So look, this is what I use every single day. All right, my phone every day. I record I record on my phone from my car. I've been doing it for I'm going on my 18th year now. You know, when I first started, uh, iPhones weren't even invented. You know, I started podcasting because um, I just felt like I tell everybody now that I had a story to share and a lesson to teach. Didn't know what it was. Didn't know it was going to blow up. I mean, I never got started podcasting thinking I would get 20 million downloads. I mean, that's ridiculous. I started podcasting because uh, I had a stuttering problem. Still do, you know, battle with that sometimes. You may hear me trip up on a word every now and again. So I wanted to conquer that. And I believe that I was built different than everybody else that I was hanging around at the time. You know, I was in a job, I was in the corporate game and it didn't excite me. It did for a little while. I mean, I was in it for 15 years, but I slowly felt myself becoming you know, part of the machine, you know? And I looked down the hallway at my boss and other people that were, you know, higher up in the company. And I asked myself, you know, do I want to be like those people? Do I want that life? Do I want to, you know, give my life away? My best years, I was in my 30s at the time. Do I want to give my best years away to this machine and just talk like everybody else and act like everybody else and, you know, for exchange for a paycheck? And the answer became obvious. It was no. So, you know, my daughter asked me one night, daddy is tomorrow Saturday. I mean, that daughter is 21 years old now working, uh, graduated college. That's how fast life goes by. And I said, someday soon, every day will be Saturday. So, you know, quit my job, launch the podcast. Sounded horrible. I mean, my podcast sounded absolutely terrible, um, but that's okay. Yeah, it's all about finding your voice. So lesson number one, most people can't find their voice in this world, all right? We try to act like other people. We see influencers online. We try to mimic those people instead of just celebrating who we are and the lesson that we have to share, you know? And that was a really big uh, eye-opener for me that the more unique I was, the more loyal of a following I was going to build. And uh, I became, you know, one of those outliers out there in the podcasting world and just stuck with it. You know, got my very first speaking gig probably within the first year of podcasting. That's a big, big deal. Um, you know, I'll share with you. This was a text message. Let me just share my screen real quick. Um, as I like to do often is, you know, most of my stories are true. So I prefer to share those with you. Let me just share here. Um, everybody see that right there? I know we got a lot going on in the background here. Let me see if I can advise that. Um, this was a text message that I got back, uh, yeah, just a couple months ago. Hi, Sam. I'm new listening to your podcast. Thank you for sharing your number. I put my cell number on my podcast a lot. And I believe you're just who I'm looking for to speak to my organization. I'm a volunteer parent in a public school who brings in guest speakers to educate the parents of these students. My mission this year is to bring in speakers who will help set my audience free from lies they believe, show the value of perspective shifting and living their true identity, not what the herd tells them. Can we talk about a speaking engagement? My desire would be early to mid-November, but I'm flexible. Thank you very much. And that was a speaking gig I'd already done. It was last month. 
And I went to Dallas and I spoke and it was a $8,000 speaking fee for maybe 45 minutes of talking. The only way this person found my podcast or the only person way the person found me was through my podcast. They just went on iTunes and searched, found it. They were looking for a motivational podcast and they found it and that's it. Now, I mean, that's how I got my very first speaking gig some 20 years ago. And it's how I still get speaking gigs. But more importantly, people always ask, you know, how do you monetize a podcast? How do you monetize a podcast? Well, it's very simple. You know, you have a message that's authentic. It's not some cookie cutter thing. You know, everybody's born an original. Sadly, most people die a copy. And you get this message dialed in because without the message, nothing else works. I showed you how I podcast. I don't have a fancy studio. This is my studio. It's in my car. Okay. And I do that for a reason. All right. I podcast in my car and I don't have a studio and I don't have advertisers and sponsors and all the fancy stuff that everybody tells you to do that podcasters, you know, all of which should probably come and gone. Um, because if I do it that way, the very bare bones way, then I have proven to you that it has nothing to do with the equipment and it has everything to do with the message, what I call the million dollar message. So without the message, everything falls apart. All right, you must be clear. You must be concise on what you're talking about. You know, and a question I get a lot is, uh, what if I run out of things to talk about? Anybody have that concern? You know, if you were to start podcasting, I'm going to run out of content after a few weeks or a couple of months. I mean, holy cow, where do you find all this stuff to talk about? You will never run out of content. You will never run out of content. I mean, the entire note section on my iPhone is filled with ideas. I listen to a lot of audiobooks. Uh, I listen to a lot of podcasts, obviously. Uh, when I'm in church, I'm listening to a sermon. I'm, yeah, I'm taking notes. Those are great ideas for a podcast because mine's a motivational, inspirational type podcast. You'll never run out of content. Just think about all the messages that come to you throughout the course of the day. And if you could talk eight to 10 minutes a few times a week, you will build the most loyal, affluent and educated following that there is anywhere else. All right. But the key is obviously to get started. The second key is you got to be clear on what this message is. You know, I talk to a lot of people, I mean, people book calls. I run YouTube ads all over the internet. When I talk to people, they're very general in what they want to talk about, you know, and my goal is to get them narrowed down just a little bit, you know, just a little, not something so broad that appeals to every single person out there because a lot of people are afraid to be judged. You know, you put an out, a message out there that's a little too dicey. Oh, someone's going to judge. Hey, get used to it. Okay. I mean, the internet is full of people judging other people. And you know, the ironic part is it's usually the people that are closest to you. You know, can I get an amen from that? It's usually family. It's usually friends that are, hell, you've changed. What's this new thing you're doing? What are you talking about? You know, once you get over that fear as well, then you begin to take really claim your power, you know. So let's talk about how people will find your podcast. All right. Let me share my screen again here. And this is uh, this is iTunes, but this is on my desktop. You know, it's a little bit different on your phone, but same concept. iTunes uh, breaks podcasts down into categories. You can see them all right here. You've got 19 different categories, all right? You've got news and comedy and society and culture across the top. You've got business, true crime, sports, health and fitness, religion, spirituality, art, education, history, TV and film, science, technology, music, kids and family, leisure, fiction, government, all right? You've got 19 categories. Does yours fit into one of those? Yeah, maybe, maybe not. If you drill down, uh, you know, maybe into a business category, for example, You've got the top shows, you've got new shows, you've got careers, investing, management, marketing, entrepreneurship, nonprofit. Maybe it fits into one of those. But how most people are going to find your podcast, they're just going to search for it. They're going to put in keywords like they would on the internet. You know, now you have to understand once you're on iTunes, you've basically left Google, Yahoo, Bing, whatever search engine you use. Now iTunes is showing you what is most relevant to your search. So if you were to type in here, for example, inspirational, somebody wants an inspirational podcast. I'm using the search bar right up here. All right. These are all the top shows for that particular keyword. All right. And a lot of them have that keyword in there. Inspirational. Let's say you want to just type in inspiration, you know, type that in. Again, you're going to search a lot of the podcasts. Uh, 
there's your boy right there, the Everyday Saturday podcast. So this is a great example. Somebody were to type inspiration. There's two and a half million podcasts currently on iTunes. All right. Seems like a lot, right? Here's the good news. 82% of those podcasts have not even been updated in the last 90 days. It's crazy. I know, right? I mean, a fresh voice like you, a new face comes onto the scene with a new message. It can explode. All right. So if you take a look, they see the cover art every day is Saturday. And then one of the top motivational podcasts for 18 years and running goes on to talk a little bit about it. And now you've got, there's that one I said I did uh, yesterday, authentic versus artificial. That was talking about, forget AI. I mean, you have got to bring out your authentic self into the world, you know? So people are going to click on the cover art. They'll sample the episode. They'll, they'll hit play. They'll listen to a few minutes of it. If they like it, then they subscribe to it, you know? And when they subscribe to a podcast, they now get pinged on their phone. All right. They have an iPhone. Every time you upload a new episode, Apple sends a notification to them because they're a subscriber. This costs absolutely nothing, by the way. There's no charge to put your podcast out there on iTunes. There's no charge to have Apple ping them to say, hey, uh, you know, Sue or Kevin or Joe has a new podcast out there. So once they're a subscriber, they get notified every time you have a new episode, which is huge. Absolutely huge. Because now you're on their iPhone. All right. And if they use a podcast player and on Android, same thing, Google Play, same thing. They update the phones with the newest episode so you can listen to it. And, you know, when you have ratings, you see there I have 977 ratings, um, most of them five stars. I'm happy not are all five stars. That would look a little suspicious, you know, but people, the way these algorithms work, for example, on iTunes is there's a few main components. All right. We're getting into the weeds a little bit, but I want to let you know how you can mod how you can optimize your podcast. You want people to leave a rating. You want people to subscribe. You have to have relevant content. All right. You got to be podcasting on a regular basis. Think about it. All right. Look at this screen right here. All right. These are podcast growth, podcast growth projections. All right. These are in the millions of listeners. So here we are right here in 2022 towards 2023, right around 90 million people are listening to podcasts. Okay. That's projected in the next couple of years to grow over 100 million. Guys, the audio revolution, it's not like it's coming. It's already here. I mean, when I started, I started way back in the day. I mean, I started in 2005. Just, there was no way. You know, I was like, you're doing what? You're podcasting? What do you do? But I could see as I continued to put my message out there. And we're talking again, eight to 10 minutes a day or three times a week talking into your phone, for example, just to get the audio out there. You have to find your voice, a clear, concise, moving message that resonates with your perfect audience who don't consume YouTube videos. They don't watch Instagram reels. They're not interested in being on Facebook 24 seven. This is a very selective audience. You know, that's why you see people in my space, you know, the Tony Robbins and the Tim Ferriss and the Russell Brunson's of the world moving into the podcasting space because there is a segment of their tribe, their followers that just don't consume their content on other platforms or they prefer to digest that audio, where? Where are people listening to podcasts? In their car, at the gym, walking the dog, you know, vacuuming, doing dishes, working around the house, anywhere. All they have to have is a set of AirPods in or listen, any listening device. They don't have to be watching a video. They don't have to be paying attention to any kind of instruction. There's no lighting involved, you know, no hair and makeup, you know, nobody sees you. And by the way, if you would like to be a professional speaker, let me just ask in the chat here. How many people have an interest in being a professional speaker? You know, let me ask that question in here. Two, two people raise their hand so far. Okay. Uh, Glenn, can my podcast be pre-recorded? Yes. Can it be video? Not on this platform. We're talking about audio only. Now, one thing you can do is you can take any video and just strip the audio out. That's a podcast. You ever listen to interviews? You know, the Joe Rogan podcast, things like that. Those are videos. And how they put them on other platforms is they just simply strip the audio out. There's a million different devices on the internet that online, you could just convert something from a video to an audio. Very simple to do. Glenn would love to be a speaker. Glenn, how would you like to get that text message that I just showed on the screen? You know, we are interested in having you come speak. Now, if the best training ground for a professional speaker, podcasting, 100%, none better. 
It's a very non-threatening way. You're speaking into this device. Nobody's watching. Nobody's judging. But you get to practice. You get to practice this message. And when you get good enough, then you put yourself out there as a speaker. And good enough is a relative term. We're talking do maybe 20, 30 episodes. Start finding that voice, what you want to talk about. And then when someone's interested in having you speak, send them two or three audios. Send them to your podcast and say, hey, these are my really top three podcast episodes. It kind of gives you an idea of what I talk about, how I sound and things like that. You will get booked to speak from your podcast. Okay. Um, so getting back to the podcasting growth, the absolute market is huge. All right. People are waiting for a new voice, new face, fresh perspective. And it's not just people. Let me get back to iTunes here. Okay. When you take a look, let me get this text message off the screen as well. When you take a look, you know, just to review, people may browse iTunes, they might browse the charts, but by and large, they're going to type into this. And if, you know, if you're somebody that's maybe in the health and fitness, or maybe you're a life coach, or maybe you're talking about social media, people are going to put those searches in there. You know, let's, uh, keto is probably a, it just came to mind. I don't know why, but let's just put keto in there. Let's talk about health and fitness. Here's all the podcasts. If you were searching for a podcast strictly on keto, look at all of them you know, and somebody would click on them. Here you go. Last episode. All right. Do they even have an last episode was September 30th. All right. Hasn't been updated. What I say last 90 days. This is number one out of two and a half million podcast episodes. This is number one. Remember I said 82% have not been updated in the last 90 days. This is number two. Is this one updated? I don't know. I have no idea. Yep. They've got a couple out today. Okay, great. Keto made simple. Wednesday. All right. So these top three are pretty good outside of the first one that hasn't updated one in the last 90 days. But as you start to drill down, you'll start seeing episodes that have not even been updated. And this is where somebody like you comes in. And this gives you an idea. May 24th. All right. This podcast is a keyword just for keto. And it is number five, number five, and hasn't had a podcast in seven months. Okay. That's what I mean. The opportunity is absolutely huge. Find your voice, work on your voice. Don't have any attachment to the outcome. You know, how many downloads is good? How many downloads should I have? Don't worry about it. All right. Prior to today, for example, if you're just getting started, you had no listeners. Tomorrow, if you have five, that's amazing. I mean, when I first started and I got my very first podcast downloads, like, and it wasn't me or my wife, I was like, oh my God. Somebody's actually listening to the show. This is amazing. Oh my, and it keeps you going. It's the fuel that you need. I work with clients all day, every day inside of our podcast mastermind. And the goal is always to find your voice with no attachment to the outcome because your success is going to come based on your commitment to it. You know, this is not going to reward some Johnny come lately. So yeah, I'm going to throw a few out there, see what happens. You know, what's going to happen when you stay committed? I'll give you a kind of a under the hood look at um, my podcasting dashboard here, all right? The 229 countries is where the Everyday Saturday podcast, my podcast goes out to. This will be you, okay? And I, I haven't even heard of some of these. I mean, you start drilling down, as you can see. I mean, look at, this is incredible. And I never take this for granted. I still look at this as, a, as amazement. You know, the Northern Mariana Islands, uh, Eritrea, Montessera. I mean, I'm probably butchering the names of these countries, but it's very empowering to just to see six to 10 downloads coming, Cook Islands. And then, of course, you get back up here to the United States, you got 10 million downloads, Canada, 570,000 and so on. But it's just amazing when you get this thing and you get the rocket fuel underneath it and you stay committed to it. You're going to reach a brand new audience just by speaking. And look, you can use a microphone into your computer. I did that for many, many years. Uh, the reason I moved to my car was because I didn't want that barrier that I got to be in front of a computer to record a podcast. You know, if I have a thought hit me and I'm leaving the gym or the grocery store, I'll pull over and I'll record, an, you know, 10 minute podcast about it. Very simple to do. Very easy to edit. You know, we're not going to talk about all the editing stuff and things like that, but uh, editing audios compared to editing videos, for example, super simple to do. Again, the reason I'm able to record so many of my clients are as well is because we've removed that barrier to entry. Just use the built-in mic on your phone or you attach. This is a microphone I got on Amazon that attaches. Sounds like studio quality. You want to make it simple to get this message out to the world. 
Nobody knows you're recording in your car. I tell everybody I am, but nobody knows. They don't know if you're in a high, high price studio or you're just simply sitting in your car, you know? Uh, question, and if the focus of my message changes, I have a very hard time sticking to one direction. You know, you can record for a couple minutes, stop. You know, I've recorded many times at home. Uh, Amazon shows up, dogs go crazy. I just hit the record, I just hit pause. Listen back to the last minute, figure out where I was in the audio. What was I talking about? Hit record, boom, go with it. Again, very, uh, you know, very, it's uh, very forgiving. You know, you can record two minutes at a time, two minutes stop, walk around, grab a glass of water, take a drink, grab a cup of coffee, come back, record another two minutes. Do that four times, you got an eight minute audio, you know? And if you want to record, for example, I do a, a show that comes out almost every single day. But if you wanted to record three episodes, let's say, you know, you got a laid back Sunday night or a Monday morning or something, you can record three episodes, boom, 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 in one day and just drip those out throughout the week. It's what a lot of podcasters do. They don't record live every day. They'll record the day before, the week before, and they'll drip those episodes out and just schedule those to come out. You know, if you want to do interviews, you know, how many people here have a, uh, I'm using a, what's called a Sure MB88, Danielle asked. Excuse me, sure, MB88 mic plugs into the uh, iPhone. But if you want to do Zoom interviews, easy. You know, two people, I want to do Zoom interviews. All right, great. Do the Zoom interview just like this is right now. This recording will be saved and there's an audio file. If I wanted to make this a podcast, I would just take the audio file, make that my podcast. You know, very easy to do. So if you want to interview people, have a great time doing it. Get on Zoom you know, record it, save the audio, upload it as a podcast. But the reason I want to share this training with you today, very casual, you know, very laid back, is to inspire you. Everybody has a story to share and everybody has a lesson to teach. And this podcasting platform was built for you, all right? It's built for the everyday Joe and Jane who lives their life knowing that they have a unique message to share and the reason it's unique is because it's your message. Look, I can't get that into the head enough that you don't got to pretend to be anybody else. All right. I came out of the gates. not thought, oh, I'm going to be the Tony Robbins or Zig Ziglar or Les Brown. Absolute horrible idea. There's only one Tony Robbins, Zig Ziglar, Les Brown. And there's only one of you. All right. Pick an area. I mean, you can be talking about parenting. You can be talking about health issues. I mean, if you want to talk about politics, have a ball. I mean, there's a platform for that as well. You know, that's kind of the third rail out there. You can talk about religion. You can talk whatever it is. There is no wrong answer. But I'll tell you the worst thing to do is start podcasting and start speaking about what you think other people like. Okay. So, you know, well, maybe, maybe it won't be too judgy or, or edgy if I talk about something. That's the worst thing you could do. This is the one shot you get to put your message out there. These platforms, you know, the top ones are iTunes, Spotify, and Stitcher, and iHeartRadio, and Amazon Music. You'll be on all those platforms, and they will gladly lift you up towards the top of those rankings. They will gladly promote your show if you can show that you're committed to putting those audios out. And it's as simple as that, guys. You know, do I sound like it? I mean, do I sound like a brainiac? I, mean, I got 20 college credits. Most of them are gym and health class, okay? I'm not here to wow you with tech. Matter of fact, tech is the least important part of success with your podcast. What did we say in the first five minutes of this webinar? If the message isn't clear, everything else falls apart. And that should be good news for you because if you're not tech savvy, it doesn't matter. If you don't have the fanciest equipment, it doesn't matter. Do you wanna build a following, yes or no? Do you wanna share your message? Yes or no? Because if you don't want to share your message, don't ever get into this space, okay? But if you believe that you have a story to share and you have a lesson to teach, you absolutely need to launch your podcast. You know, I shared a story on my show uh, a few weeks back about uh, this elderly gentleman who's, who's at my country club and he just lost his wife recently. And his name's Kit. And I said, Kit, man, I'm so sorry to hear about your wife, man. That's terrible to lose a spouse. And, and they were madly in love. You know, he's probably in his mid 70s. I said, Kit, what advice would you give somebody, you know, married guy like me? He said, son, kid, you know, uh, have your wife leave you a voicemail. And I said, why is that? And he said, because I would give anything to have my phone right now with me 
and listen to a voicemail from my wife. So make sure your wife leaves your voicemail that you can always listen to. And I thought, damn, that's powerful. You ever want good wisdom? Talk to old people. They got all the wisdom. They've lived life. They know what's important. So I thought, man, I was thinking about that. So I went on to play around the golf and I was walking the course. And I thought, man, that's what podcasting is. I mean, these are voicemails to the world that you're leaving to the world. Like how many voicemails do you want to leave out there for people to inspire them, to empower them, you know, to live their best life in the area that you talk about, you know? So if you're looking to find your voice, yep. If you're looking to share a message, the audience is already there. If you're looking to monetize it, I've already shared with you how I do it. You know, whether it's, you know, getting people to contact you directly. I send people through a funnel to a landing page where they watch a video. And at the end of that video, they can book a call with me. That's the main way. I don't have advertisers, don't have sponsors, never had, never will, you know, because in that corporate game, I was always beholden to other people like, hey, you need to say this, you need to say that. Advertisers and sponsors, they get a little wonky with that. You know, they want to kind of have a little bit of control over what the message is. I, I want nothing to do with that. I mean, I am Sammy the freedom fighter out there. All right. I, I am beholden to nobody. I want a 20 million downloads. Thank you very much. I'll do my own thing. You can do the exact same thing. You can monetize your podcast just by simply having a call to action at the end of your show. You've just talked for eight to 10 minutes. What do you want them to do now? You know? So a very natural one for me, I could be talking about, you know, procrastination, for example, how a lot of people suffer from, you know, unable to take action. Hey, thanks for tuning in to today's show. Like this would be the way I would end it. Thanks for tuning in uh, to today's show, guys. Listen, if you're ready to stop procrastinating and you're ready to take action and you want to discover your million dollar max message, go to launchmymovement.com. All right. Book a call with me. And the worst thing will happen, you walk away with three concrete ideas that you can use right now to really harness the power of your message. All right, go to launchmymovement.com. That's it. Very natural, not salesy. Takes about five seconds to say the call to action, but it's also congruent with that eight minute audio that they just listened to, okay? And that's how you monetize a podcast, you know? Have I said anything in the last half hour that you feel is just impossible? And by the way, right now, uh, we're gonna open it up to Q&A. So if you have any questions, type them in the chat. But has there been anything in the last 30 minutes that you've heard? You think, you know, I can't really do that. Man, it sounds a little bit intimidating. This is the only platform, in my opinion, that doesn't have that intimidation factor. Like I said, no video, no hair and makeup, no lighting needs to be great. Nobody watching you, you know, it, you're doing it pretty much by yourself into a microphone and you're able to practice. Super simple to do, you know. So here's my call to action to you. All right. There's probably a couple of people on this webinar that are like, man, I'm inspired. I am ready to get this message off the ground, but I qu don't quite know what my message is. I'm not quite sure how to say it and I need help. All right, so this is the point. This is, this is my call to action to that you know, group of people that are on the webinar. Some of you are on, you got great information. You can hit the eject button right now and it was great to have you on the webinar. You can stick around as well for the Q and A. If you have any, I'll be happy to answer. But for the individual, who really wants to launch their million dollar message and work with me to do that, I would normally send you through that funnel to watch a video uh, at Launch My Movement. Go ahead and text me. Just shoot me a text message. This really is my cell number. Yes, it'll pop up. Yes, I'll respond right away as soon as the webinar is over. Uh, my number is 513-582-6570. All right, 513-582-6570. 6570. If you're serious about launching this movement, all right? I just want to make sure we put that qualifier out there because uh, a lot of things you can chat about on a call, but you're way too busy and so am I to just have a conversation. I'm just going to type it in the chat. All right. And I do this because there's usually one or two people on these webinars that are ready to go. And I want to make it really easy. All right. You don't need to watch a video. You don't need to go on an online calendar and book a call. You can jump through those hoops. Because you showed up on the webinar, that's that's really my reward for that, you know, is to get going. Glenn, I see you put your email in there. Is that for us to contact you? You stop sharing.
Any questions, guys? What questions do you have? Fire mom. I'm here. All right, Glenn. I'll shoot you an email when we're done here. Or forever hold your peace. I know we still got everybody. I don't think we've lost anybody yet. Look, I am I am really here for you. Okay. So I got nowhere to be in the next 30 minutes. You got questions, fire them away. All right. How to focus on one message, or it says, I find myself in several different niches. Well, that's a great question. Um, and I would think almost every podcaster starts with that same question. How do I, I've got so many things I can talk about. All right. So I would ask this question. There's got to be one thing, maybe two, that you are really passionate about. Really, really passionate about. And don't judge it like there's not a market. There's a market for everything. Okay. I have seen the most obscure podcasts get launched and go crazy. All right. With downloads. There's got to be one or two things, you know, maybe you're a parent, maybe you're a spouse, maybe you're active in your church, maybe you're really into health and fitness, okay? There's got to be something that you do every day that is non-negotiable or something you think about every day that's just non-negotiable. Like, I got to do this. I love doing this, okay? What is that? You know, and start with that. Like mine's a very broad podcast. Mine's a motivational podcast. But what it really is when you dive into it, it's all about monetizing your million dollar message. It's, it's about busting through fear. I have four main pillars of my business, that vision, action, results, and belief. And if you want to get started with that, create four pillars of your business. Mine always is you got to have a big vision or you won't take big action. And when you take big action, you'll get big results. And when you have big results, you'll have big belief. And then it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy, vision, action, results, belief. And if you flip it, if you have a small vision, you're just going to take a little bit of action. And what happens then? Hey, you might get a result here or there, not really. And then your belief really isn't there. Big vision, action, results, belief. Put pillars to your business. It will help you frame your message. Do I need a website to start? No. No. Now, the technical part of it, you need to create what's called a, and this is from Alexandra, you need to create what's called a podcast feed. So you're going to need a domain name and you're going to need web hosting with that. You're talking, you know, $3, $5 a month for web hosting. Do not, and I'm glad you asked this question, Alexandra, thank you. Do not host your podcast on a, on a free platform like Anchor or something like that. Why? Because you have no control over your podcast. Anchor goes out of business, so do you. You want to control everything through your domain, all right? So you like mine is everydayasaturday.com. My podcast flows through there. I control it. I'll always control it. I'll never be out of business. And that's what we train our clients to do. Uh, Anita, how do you monetize it? I don't really know how I would make money. Well, when we just talked about that earlier, there's a call to action on your podcast. Do you have a product yourself? Then you would promote that. Could you promote someone else's product as an affiliate and get paid? Sure. I do coaching. So I always send people to book a call. I don't sell coaching on my podcast. The only thing I sell is the call. You start selling aspects of your product on a podcast, you're just asking for more questions and answers. Get people to take one action. Book a call is what I tell people to do. Book a call. Okay. So you monetize it by selling products and services because these people are very loyal. All right. You're talking 70% of podcast consumers make over 100 grand a year. All right. Over half of podcast consumers have a master's degree or higher. And eight out of 10 can recall a sponsor or advertiser that they heard on a podcast. These are very loyal, educated, affluent people. So, Anita, what do you want them to do after they've listened to your podcast? That's how you monetize it. Do you want to sell coaching? then have them book a call or get in contact with you. Give that information on the podcast because you have to move them from the podcasting platform over to where you are now, all right? You want them to opt in to get their email to give them a free ebook or audio or something like that, then send them to a page where they enter their email, all right? That's how you move them from the podcasting platform over to that. I have people text me because it's real simple. I give them my number, they send me a text, I jump on a call. Look, I'm not in the business of, you know, all the bells and whistles. I want to get results and they want results. Why would I make it difficult for people to get a hold of me? You know, text me. Let's go. Forget all the different hoops you got to jump through. Let's just get going. You're in pain. You want to get from point A to point B. Let's get you out of pain. Let's get you clear on your message and get this tribe built for you. Make it easy for people to do business with you. Good questions. Good questions. 
Thank you, Aura, Alexandra, and Anita. Great questions. What else? What other questions you guys got? Anything? No wrong. There are no silly questions. I'm here to answer them. Make sure we got them all. All right. All right. So to recap, everything begins with your message. Okay. Everything begins with your message. And please have confidence in your message. All right. Don't lose that confidence. You know, I was listening to my daughter the other day and one of the kids was, uh, one of the kids was trying to tell her that the elf isn't real. It's a magical time in our house. I have an eight-year-old daughter. I have four daughters. One of them's eight years old. I'm like, that little kid. Tell him. I said, Susan, the magic. Do you believe in the magic of the elf? Yeah, daddy. Yeah, I do. Great. Then hold on to that. I'm waiting for, you know, somebody to tell her Santa isn't real and the Easter bunny. I had to deal with the other three kids on that. And the reason I share that story with you is because those people never leave your life. Have you had somebody recently try to tell you that what you thought or what you did was stupid? You know, that's not going to work. These people show up in your life. I'm here to empower you. All right. I'm here to tell you that if you feel like you're one of the crazy ones, you're onto something big here. All right. If everybody agrees with what you're saying, you should run because then you're in trouble. All right. We are not in, we do not have that disease to please. Okay. But these little eight-year-old kids that tell you Santa isn't real are the same 38-year-old ones that tell you that you're crazy for going for your dream. All right. I'm here to tell you you're right where you need to be. All right. Uh, recommended web host. No, I mean, any, any, any web host is fine. You know, we work with a particular one because we're so used to it, but I don't want to get caught up in, you know, a web host would be like a GoDaddy, a Bluehost, something like that. But Glenn, when we talk, because I assume you want me to shoot you an email, um, I'll answer that question for you. Um, thank you, Anita. I appreciate that. What can I use to edit the voice recording with Microsoft operating system? Well, there is a, Chantel asked this question. I use Audacity. So Audacity is a free open office software. All right, you can download it from the internet. This is it right here. Um, I don't know if it's connected to my microphone or not, but you can see that right there. If I were recording a podcast, this is what it would look like. All right. Microphone or not, you can see that right there. If I were recording a podcast, this is what it would look like. That's it. That's how I record my podcast every day. So you can download Audacity from the internet and it's free. I've been using it for 18 years and all my clients use it. And it's super easy to edit audio inside of there. What about, Jason asks, what about simultaneously broadcasting on multiple platforms? Also, I'm concerned about being canceled for my saying the wrong thing and losing my work product. Okay, let's start with the first one. Simultaneously broadcasting. Yes, I'm making a recording, Anita. I'm going to put it in our free Facebook group, The Million Dollar Message. So if you're in that group, you'll have access to it, The Million Dollar Message group. It's free on Facebook. Um, Jason, simultaneously broadcasting on multiple platforms. Um, once you only got to record once. So multiple platforms would be podcasting speaking. Okay. Talking about your podcast, you record an, an audio one time and you upload it one time. That's it. And it goes to all the different platforms. All right. One time. Let me show you what that looks like here. Cause I just uploaded one. Share my screen here. Hold on. Share screen. So these are all, this is that authentic versus artificial. So these are all my podcasts. I just upload them to my website. And because I've created what's called a podcast feed, once I upload this, Spotify pings my site and your site when it's there, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeart, iTunes, Amazon Music, it appears pretty quickly on all of those different platforms. So you upload it through one central portal, which is your own website. This is why you never want to use a free platform like an anchor or something like that. And you don't do anything. You don't, you don't upload your podcast to iTunes. You upload it through your website. iTunes grabs that information, just like a, a, a page on Google would be indexed. You know, same thing. Google pings your website every day looking for fresh content. Podcasting platforms are pinging your site every day, pinging your podcast feed for all of these different episodes that are there. All right. Uh, 
is there a way this is a Q&A is there a way we can record video while doing the podcast at the same time yeah of course yeah upload a video you can use zoom zoom's free record a video on zoom upload that video to youtube and then strip the audio up and make that your podcast absolutely uh yeah i wouldn't use anchor I, i'm not here to uh the lesson learned one of my clients just came on board and she was on anchor and we just started a brand new podcast just let that one die off on anchor you can also migrate it from anchor to the new platform as well if you already have if you have like five years worth of podcast you don't want to lose them uh but anchor isn't built for the freedom person it's built because anchor wants to keep you on anchor and they'll run ads on your podcast uh, without your permission. I mean, you have to, when you sign up with them, give them permission, but they'll just run willy-nilly ads. On it. You don't want that. You want to control the message, all right? This is your platform, your message. This is your own virtual platform. You know, think about it, you know, speaking gigs, live speaking gigs, that's kind of a dead industry now, post-COVID. You know, pre-COVID, all of us speakers were being flown all around the country to speak. Post-COVID, everybody's on webinars, everybody's on Zoom. This is your virtual stage. You don't got to fly anywhere. You don't got to stay overnight in a hotel. You don't got to eat some rubber chicken dinner someplace. 50 people might show up. This is your audience. It's your virtual stage. Which is very cool, you know. All right. Let's see. Any other questions? Thank you so much. Very authentic, genuine. Well, you're very welcome. Or thanks for showing up. Appreciate it. Glad you got some value from it. Again, if you're inside of our free Facebook group, The Million Dollar Message, I'm going to be uploading the replay there this afternoon so you can watch it back if there's anything that you want to watch again there. If you, uh, how do you create, Alex, thanks for the content today. How do you create topics and ideas? Well, as I mentioned earlier, you know, there's messages coming to us 24 7. I listen to a lot of podcasts, I listen to a lot of audiobooks. Um, you know, this is my Audible account here. So, you know, you can see the ultimate Jim Rohn library, the ultimate Jim Rohn library. That's my very first uh, audio that I got up there I listened to. Right now, I'm listening to that, The End of Jobs by Taylor Pearson, which is a great book. Uh, the Culture Code talks about building groups, Letting Go, which is a really deep, deep book. But uh, Power Positive Thinking, Norman Vincent Peale, The 80-20 Principle. These are all of my audiobooks. I get so much content to talk about. Now, I don't plagiarize these people, but it's generally speaking, you know, I'll listen to Jim Rohn talk about the power of discipline. I'm like, that's a great topic, man. I'm going to give my version of what the power of discipline looks like. That's it. Uh, I listen to a lot of sermons online. You know, I'm a Christian, so I listen to a lot of sermons online. I'll sit in church on a Sunday and I'll be on my note section. That's a great talking about faith. Yeah, I did a four part series on faith from the book of James, you know, from the Bible. Great content was inspired to talk about faith because a lot of people uh, believe in faith, you know, oh, you got to have faith. Well, a faith that's never been tested can't be trusted, you know, and, and when was the last time you really had to step out on faith? I mean, without any safety net, those are the types of uh, areas I get for inspiration. But again, Alex, you can look at other podcasters. You know, go into that search I showed earlier on iTunes. Look at other people that are podcasting in the niche that that you want to talk about, and look at what they're talking about, and put your your spin is probably a bad word, but you know your your own thoughts into that. Uh, you'll never run out of content. Facebook, you can go to a Facebook page. Like I go to Bob Proctor, the late Bob Proctor, good friend, and I'll just look at the comments. There'll be seven hundred comments on a topic. And I'll start scrolling through and say, wow, these people are really struggling with, you know, a vision or taking action or procrastination or something like that or limiting beliefs. This is great content because I'll look at their comments on a Facebook page and say, I can help with that problem and I'll create a podcast around it. Send it out. Facebook pages are great. Just look, just look at the comment section of them, you know. Roger, thanks so much, Sam. I want to get started with my first podcast, just finding a place where to start. I have a friend I'd like to co-host one with. Yeah, sure. Do a co-host. Just both of you can jump on Zoom if you're not in the same city. And you can do as many podcasts as you like. Strip the audio out of them and giddy up, baby. Giddy up. How do you feel about, Alex says, how do you feel about having a broad topic versus a very specific topic for the podcast? I feel like 
that is holding me back. Start broad. I would start with a broad topic. Mine is every day is Saturday. You know, motivation, inspiration, success. Those are very broad topics. So you start with that general umbrella that's kind of a catch-all for everybody looking for that. And then you can get specific within the episode. Does that make sense? So the overall, like if you're watching a, you know, a series on Netflix, you know, you've got the overall title of the series, but then you have individual episodes, which zero in on a specific topic for an hour or so. Same thing with your podcast. You got a very broad topic, health and fitness, motivation, business, investing, whatever that looks like. And your individual episodes allow you to really narrow down what you're going to talk about. That's where the narrowing down comes in. But you got to be clear on the message. All right. And again, uh, I put my cell number in the chat for those of you. And I, look, we have what, 18, 20 people that are still on here. Or so 16 now that are, there's probably a few that you're ready. This message hit you at the right time. It's the end of the year. You want to get going. You know, you got a message inside. Text me. All right. Just text me. As I'm talking now is the way we're going to talk on the phone. All right. 513-582-6570. All right. Just monitoring the chat here. Great crew today. Great crowd today. And look, those of you that were on, you were the ones that are supposed to be on here today live, the ones that are watching the recording. I know you couldn't be on live. This message was supposed to hit you at the right time. And that right time may be today. Or you may be watching a replay three weeks from now, and that's the right time. But it, you're going to get moved like I did 20 years ago. At some point, you're going to say, I got a story to share. I know I got a story to share. I just need somebody to help me do it. At some point, it's going to hit you. All right. All right, guys. Oh, wow. The world famous Cynthia Lumberg is here, host of the Mind, Body, Spirit podcast. I see you, Cynthia. Cynthia just launched your podcast. Great. And what? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give Cynthia a shout out because she would never brag about herself. Cynthia embodies what we look for in our clients, commitment. She is committed to her message. And she just came on board a couple of months ago. Could not be more proud of her. Uh, and uh, she is absolutely committed to getting several shows out every week. She's finding her voice and up near 100 downloads now. And I, I, know, I don't know. I don't remember what we talked about. It probably it took her almost a year to get to that number with Anchor. And she's already there in a month or two, a little over a month. Great job. Great job. All right, guys, I think that's a wrap. Um, I'm going to stop the recording. I'll upload it into our free Facebook group a little bit later on today. And if you want to get a hold of me, I gave you my cell number. It's 513-582-6570. And when you're ready to rock and roll, I'll be here to get you going. Uh, you guys have a great rest of your day. And if I don't talk to you online or in person, hope you have a happy holiday and a Merry Christmas and enjoy it, man. Just enjoy it. All right. You guys have a great day. Take care.